HTTP Strict Transport Security, or HSTS for short, is a mechanism to force clients to communicate in HTTPS with a web server if both supports that protocol. In this video, I want to go through the following. I'm going to talk about what is HST, HSTS, right? Before we do that, what kind of attack forced us to actually invent this technology? which is the HSTS, right? So there's an attack called SSL stripping. We're going to talk about that, right? Or TLS stripping, because we're in modern world right now, right? Then we're going to talk about a little bit about HSTS, which is HTTP strict uh, transport security. Then we're going to talk about how HSTS actually can prevent SSL stripping. Then finally, we're going to talk about limitation, because guess what? I think it's perfect. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Hussein, and this channel will discuss all sorts of software engineering by example. So if you want to become a better software engineer, consider subscribing and hit that bell icon so you get notified every time we make a software engineering video. With that said, let's just jump into this video. SSL stripping. So assume this, guys, right? Assume you have a web server that supports both HTTP and HTTPS, okay? And uh, most of web servers do that, right? Most web servers also forwards all HTTP traffic to the HTTPS front end, right? They always do this, right? So they support both, but if you go to HTTP, right, to the website, it will automatically convert to HTTPS, which is fine, right? Because you want your clients to always communicate to HTTPS. And it's like you're saying, what's bad about this? Looks fine to me, right? That's actually kind of kind of tricky situation here. So if you go to Bank of America as an HTTP, you will immediately go to HTTPS, right? So that's the server doing that for you. It will just redirect you, right? It's just say, hey, that's bad. Don't connect to HTTP. Do not communicate with me in an encrypted way, okay? Let's flip to HTTPS. That's cool, right? But here's what will can happen. A client, the first time you make a request to HTTP, right? Just not HTTPS, HTTP, bankofamerica.com, okay? You're going to make an, an unencrypted GET request, right, to the server. It says, hey, give me the index to the HTML page. This GET request, since it's unencrypted, can be man in the middle, right? Someone can intercept it, can look at it, can see you want to go there. So I can, as an attacker, if I do an R poisoning, I can forward all of your stuff to me, and I can see that you want to go to Bank of America, and that's important, okay? If I want to, I, I know you're going there. How about if I make a site called bank, and I misspell bank too, like instead of B-A-N-K, it's just like a bank, or, or misspell America, bank of America with an I. Well, I don't know, something like that, right? And I own that site, okay? And it is secure. And I just intercept that request, since I can read it, I'm going to respond to you, hey, dude, please redirect to this website, and I'm going to give you the bad website. And it is encrypted, so you have no idea. So what will happen is the client will get back the request and says, okay, the browser will just automatically honor the redirect, obviously, and will just like redirect you to the attacker website. Just because the first request can be sniffed by the middle man in the middle. That's bad, right? Because with the attacker, I'm going to make a site called Bank of America, the com, <laughs> right? And if I do that, what will happen is I'm going to make it exactly the same and I make it secure even. I'm going to use less encrypt. I'm going to encrypt so you can trust me, right? And then it's identical. So once you have that, you will see the same page and you'll start entering your credential. And obviously I'm going to fail there because as an attacker, I don't know how to forward stuff to the Bank of America unless I have access to the API. That's even worse, <laughs> okay? Maybe you can actually. It's not that, that hard. So then you can essentially sniff your credentials, do all that phishing kind of attacks, right? This is not even phishing. This is worse, okay? This is man in the middle. That's the problem with SSL stripping. This is called SSL stripping. So you you make the request, and I am, if that request, if the first HTTP request reached the server, Bank of America would have swizzled that into HTTPS, but it didn't even reach that. So Bank of America have no idea about that. So that's bad, right? So what do we want to prevent is we want to prevent that first unencrypted call because that's bad, right? What do we do? Well, 
HSTS to the rescue. It's called HTTP Strict Transport Security. Bank of America. Browsers, Chrome, Firefox, you guys, you should do better. You should never let the user make an unencrypted request to these popular websites. Okay? So, what do we do, guys? It's like, his browsers is like, guys, we can't do anything. What do we do? You want, you, want, you, you want us to make a list of all the sites in the world that forced to, to work with HTTPS? That's exactly what they did. <laughs> so there is one list. It's called HST, HSTS list, preloaded list, of every single website that is like popular ones, like Google, Bank of America, Yahoo, right? That, that force, that only forces stuff, right? To clients to work with HTTPS. And that's baked into your browsers today. So if you type google.com and hit enter, right? What will happen is the browser will always communicate with HTTPS, the first request that will that will force the TLS handshake. So it's very hard for a man in, man, the, man in the middle to actually intercept that if it's TLS, right? Very hard. Possible, right? But it's very, very hard, okay? So what will happen here is you make a request. Now the client is aware of the security of the website, okay? So there is one limitation, right? So you want me to make all these lists, right? What if I want, I have a, a new website called Hussein, Hussein Banking, whatever, and I want this to be secure, and I built my security on the server. Well, they told us, hey, if you return strict transport security header on your website, we're going to update our list for you, right? That's That seems like to solve it, right? So if you... You'll need to at least communicate with the server once, okay? Once you communicate once with the server in an HTTPS manner, you're going to receive that header, and the browser will say, hey, oh, this site wants to communicate always in HTTPS, and there is like a max age. For the next year, please, any request to this request, to this swap website, always use HTTPS. If you have a page, and there is like a mixed mode. There is a bunch of links to Hussein Banking, HTTP Hussein Banking slash BN, uh, on the BNG, right? And there is another web page that uh, the another link goes to HTTP, another link to HTTP. All these, convert them to HTTPS, please. Never communicate with me in HTTP because it's bad. It's unencrypted. It can be man in the middle real hard. We don't want that. Okay, so that's, that's the header we talked about, okay? Okay, so how HSTS prevents SSL trust trapping? Let's talk about that. So, yeah, so if your web server supports both HTTP and HTTPS, right, that's okay, right? And you can do the swizzling on the back end, that's fine, right? You make HTTP, if they're ever reached, you're gonna switch to HTTPS, but we don't want to clients to even make that HTTP request. Bad idea. So the clients check its list, right? It will check its list. Like I'm going to say, google.com before i even send the request right how do you want me to communicate with the browser or the, with the server is this http or https this, the client doesn't know the browser doesn't know right unless the user specifically said http colon slash slash then you want http if you say just google.com enter then you're giving the browser the choice right and if you're giving the browser the choice okay the browser will look i think the browser looks regardless but i might be wrong there it looks through the list it says hey google.com is an H H hsts list so i'm gonna always communicate with https so i'm gonna do the handshake tls 1.3 all that jazz uh all the ephemeral uh, diffie hellman right and then communicate with you okay so that's what it well what if i'm going to hussein banking.com which supports hsts on the server Right, but I the client is the first time accessing it, so the browser doesn't know. It's the first time the browser ever consuming the stuff. All right, so it says, okay, I, I'm looking at the list. HosseinBanking.com is not. I'm sorry, it's not in the list. So tough luck. I don't know. What What do you want me to do? So what What will happen if you say HosseinBanking.com enter without any protocol? That will communicate with HTTP. Okay, and then. My server will says, wait a minute, please redirect HTTPS. I tell the server, 
I'm telling the client, hey, HTTPS, and then at that time, I'm going to respond with the header saying restrict transport security uh, for the next two years. Hussein Banking, always please use HTTPS, right? So that's cool. Browsers, Firefox will say, oh, Hussein Banking is now updated with this HTTPS thing. Oh, let's use it. All right, that's cool. So now it's updated. And then for the future, the next call, if I do Hussein Banking enter, I'm going to look at the list, and then list says, oh, this is HTTPS, so let's make HTTPS calls only. And that's amazing, guys, all right? So that's what we want to do, right? You see obvious problems, right? This is not perfect, right? I, I wish this HSTC, 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 my God, it's hard to pronounce. HSTS, it's not centralized, it's every browser. And I hope this, like, becomes a centralized thing that, that can be downloaded, all right? And... I don't know why just browsers always communicate with HTTPS. It should be like that. This is the future now, right? Some limitations. I forgot to add one, one, one here. But one of the limitations is that this is this list grows very large. And you might argue with me, guys, but I, I'm, a, I'm a software engineer like that. The lookup becomes slower, and the browser experience becomes bad because you're looking up, right? So looking up is, is probably, I hope this is some sort of a database somewhere on the browser. Um, we have limited, browser, I mean, we have IndexedDB, we can use that, I guess. I, can, I guess we might be using that. Probably it's not a sequential search because you're talking about how many sites are there, like 1 million, 2 million HTTPS sites, 3 million, 4 million, billion, right? That's a quick search. Is that a quick search? No. So browsers are doing work to, to optimize that query. My, you might say, Hussein, you just, yeah, you just, you just like, a, you're, just a, you're a pessimist, right? You're talking about too much. This is the web. How fast is this? Well, even if it takes like a second or 500 milliseconds, it's still slow, right? Just to query to the HSTS less. I want that list query to be less. I probably it's, it's indexed and all that jazz, but yeah. That's the first thing. Grows large. What do you do, right? You, you're shipping. What do you do? You're shipping, you're shipping all this stuff. It's, it's, it's a big data, right? So it's like the, the browser setup becomes larger and larger. That's a problem. Another problem is it doesn't work with downgrade attacks. And here's what downgrade attack in a nutshell. Downgrade attack, like if you communicate with a, with a server, right? Back in the old days with SSL 3.0 and TLS 1.2. Before TLS 1.3, the client and the server were negotiating options, which is a very bad idea. Okay, because it's like, hey, client, here, server, that's me, handshake, hello, client, hello, I support, uh, uh, I support this, I support that, I support this uh, uh, key exchange algorithm, Diffie Hellman, I support RSA, I support uh, SSL 3.0, I support TLS 1.2, I support TLS 1.3, right, all that jazz, I support all this algorithm, or maybe it's an old client, or maybe it's an Internet Explorer 8.0 that doesn't support all that stuff, supports very old ciphers right and the server will communicate and they will agree on the latest better best uh encryption algorithm out there a downgrade attack is if an if an attacker intercepts that client hello and says hey i only support ssl 3.0 which is a very insecure old stuff right so you essentially downgrade the communication for an attacker to easily break that stuff it's still secure it's still saying HTTPS, but it's it's bad. It's a, it's just very weak ass uh, encryption algorithm. Okay, so that's what I don't get attack. HSTS doesn't help with that because because it only makes an HTTPS request. It doesn't make a, it it doesn't it doesn't force ciphers. Okay, that's something you do on your server. Probably if you're using HA proxy, you can say, hey, well, I am supporting SSL or TLS, and uh, I only want to support Diffie Hellman ephemeral, right? Uh, perfect, it's a perfect forward secrecy, something like that, right? You can only support that stuff, right? So that's that you have to do in the server. So HSTS doesn't help with that. Another thing, if you have a website is not in the HSTS list and the client will make an encrypted HTTP call for the first time, that I know it's a far fetched, but it can happen, right? If you, if my Firefox never visited HosseinBanking.com and I supported HSTS on the server, 
but the client doesn't know. If I'm going to Starbucks for the first time and decided to, for the first time ever, to visit uh, HosseinBanking.com, right? So, and I did it in a bad way, where I, I, I just literally tie HosseinBanking.com into, which will what? We will establish an HTTP call to Hussein Banking on the server, right? Can be intercepted by a shady John. Can intercept my my uh, can can do an our poisoning for uh, present to be the the network router and then forwards all the requests there and then it says okay oh by the way go to this site instead right and that's it well, I'm, I'm I'm hacked right unless I know how my website looks like and I would know that's why it's very important guys to even if you if you say if you see the padlock that's not enough. That's not, if you're paranoid like me, that's not enough. A lot of people say, hey, once it's the bad look, you're golden. Not if you're on shady Starbucks websites, right? On <laughs> shady Starbucks uh, Wi-Fi. So you look at the bad look, you click, and you say, what the heck is this certificate coming from? Is it coming from Google? Is it coming from just, look at that, look at the name. Who issued it? Okay, is it if it's Bank of America? I'm going to Bank of America. It better said issued by Bank of America. Okay, if it's Google, it better say issued by Google. If it you're going to Google.com and someone swizzled the website and says like Google with a double E or whatever, a lot of people do that and and talk you to an encrypted website that is served by him. The only thing that he can change is the certificate because he has to, to issue the certificate himself or herself. And that, if you look at the certificate, you can look. So, oh, issued by Shady, okay? Shady John. Do not trust him, okay? All right, so that's it for me today, all right? I, I made this video, guys, so I can take it to the next level to make this whole thing. What happened when you click uh, type and click enter? what exactly happens on the background, right? So we're gonna talk about all that stuff in another video. Hope you enjoyed this video. Share with your friends. We're gonna see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome.